Hey everybody, welcome to this uh, tutorial. I guess it is a tutorial. Uh, someone on the Blender Facebook page asked uh, how do we model these lampshades? And uh, so I just thought I'd jump in really quick and show you how I would go about doing this. Uh, just a couple of things to note here is that this will be a kind of a two part tutorial. Uh, one for these more basic shapes uh, that will be more beginner oriented and one part for this uh, more complex object that will be more geared towards uh, beginner to intermediate Blender users. Uh, just thought I'd point out that real quick. So let's begin by going into the 3D view and I have there my UV editor uh, with my image loaded up so I can see it in the viewport or see it in all times. And now I am going to just select everything in the 3D view by pressing A two times, as you can see here. And now pressing X and delete everything. Boom, gone. Because uh, we don't need them. And I'm also going to get rid of the timeline over here. So just drag this window down, get rid of that. This is a modeling tutorial, not an animation, so we don't need that either. And now I'm just going to press Shift A bring up the add menu and I'm going to add a mesh, a UV sphere, because that is the object that is most similar to this shape that we are going to model. So, all right, just uh, press tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to select this top and this bottom uh, vertices over here. And I'm just going to press X and delete them. Delete the vertices, they're gone. Uh, those are kind of the gonna be the holes for the what well, you can't really see them too well over here, but the, the caps on the other underside and the uh, above lampshades. Uh, so I'm going to switch now to edge mode uh, by pressing Ctrl tab and I'm going to select the edges. Now I'm holding Alt and clicking the uh, edge here. Uh, Blender will select select the entire loop slide or loop um, around this object, and we want to select every uh, loop around the object, basically because that's, those are going to be our ridges uh, that we can see on the model here. So we can just select one of them and then go into the select menu down over here and select edge rings. Boom, that will select all of the edge loops around the entire model. So now um, we are going to actually change things so we can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to tab out of that to object mode. And in this tools uh, panel over here, I'm just going to set the shading to smooth. and going to add uh, into the modifier uh, panel over here. Going to add a modifier and that's the uh, subdivision surface. Uh, this will subdivide and smooth out the entire model. I'm going to increase the subdivisions a bit so we have more geometry, uh, which will provide a smoother model uh, in the end. Also, I'm going to put down optimal display so that we can see it a little bit better. Uh, here in the viewport. So uh, let's hop back into edit mode by pressing tab. And these ridges, they are going to be sharp. So I'm bringing up the end panel uh, by uh, pressing N. And in the transform um, category over here, we have a mean crease setting. And if we increase that, we'll just see a little bit that the uh, edges are kind of hardening or stretching or however I'm going to explain that. Um, basically, it's telling the subdivision modifier to just harden these edges. Uh, however, I think a value of the maximum value of one is a little bit too hard. So I'm going to set it down a little bit to about 0.9. I think should be good. 
And now I can get rid of this panel again by pressing N and uh, maximizing our uh, viewport a little bit. So now uh, I'm going to add more loop cuts uh, or more loops uh, between every crease here. And there's a simple way to do that and just pressing or uh, selecting this loop, Alt press the loop. And I'm going to once again so go down to select menu and select the edge rings, which will select all the loops adjacent to this loop. And now I'm just going to bring up the specials menu by pressing W and I'm going to subdivide this. So now we can see that all between every uh, hard edge, there is now a, uh, an additional loop. And we're going to select them all by just, well, I could go around and select every one of them one by one by doing this, just holding Alt and Shift and selecting one of them. But uh, that's that's quite a, man, quite a lot of loops and I'm not interested in wasting all the time. So I'm just going to select all of them, one of them, I mean. And then I'm once again going to select the, uh, going down into the select menu and I'm going to select similar face angles. Boom. Here we go. We have selected all of those new loops now. And before I'm just scaling them in, I want to show you how the ridges look. Quite nice. But I'm I don't want the top and the bottom object to be this jagged over here. So I'm going to undo this real quick. And I'm going to try and unselect uh, these top uh, edges that are selected now. So easiest way to do this is just control tab and I want to switch to vertex select mode. That will convert all our edge selections to vertices. And now I can just uh, alt shift click this loop here, select everything, click it again. And that will deselect uh, all the vertices that were previously selected. And I will do the same thing on the other under side here. So hold Alt Shift, select, deselect. And now when we shift back to edge select mode, only these edges are now selected. So now we can scale it in again, press S and just drag it in a tiny, tiny bit because we still, we, we don't want to uh, exaggerate uh, these ridges. They're just gonna be uh, visible by a tiny amount. We can now also increase the subdivisions here to see it a little bit smoother. And that looks good, I think. Uh, we're basically done with this uh, spherical object here. And all of these, well, most of these other shapes are just this basic shape, but either stretched along the z-axis, so you can see scale, scale it up and we get this lampshade, or to get this, we just squash it, so scale, z, squash it, and we have this lampshade over here. Pretty cool, right? So by just modeling this shape and just stretching it and squashing it, we get most other lampshades here. Uh, Except this one is a little bit tricky because only the top side is squashed. So undoing that, Control Z. Um, we're actually gonna non-destructively uh, modify this uh, object. And what I mean by that is we're going to Shift A, add a lattice object, and this is basically a cube that we will scale up to cover the entire object. Now, this lattice is going to be a deformer, which means uh, it will deform this object. Um, just basically, you'll see. I'm going to add a modifier to this existing object that we want to deform. So under the deform panel, we have a lattice deform uh, modifier. And we will select the lattice that we want to deform our object with, which is this one. 
And now we can just tap into edit mode on this lattice object. We can select all the uh, vertices over here and we can if you just drag it out, we can see that if the forms are modeled with it. So uh, in this panel here, we have our properties for uh, the lattice object. Uh, we can change the subdivisions uh, on X, Y, and Z. So that just decides how uh, how many subdivisions we want to, uh, or how much we want to deform this object by. Uh, I'm gonna tick this box so we just see the outside lines over here. Get rid of the inside lines because it's just bothering me. Uh, I just want subdivisions on the Z axis, and actually I want five, I think. So now let's just go into front orthographic view. I'm going to box select this top row vertices and I'm going to move them down, thereby squashing the uh, entire object. I'm going to box select this row, bring it up a little bit, and we can see that just creates a harder edge uh, here, like this object. However, um, I want this edge to be a little bit harder, and if we select our object here, we tap into edit mode, we can see that, hey, this is just our original object, hasn't been changed uh, in any way, uh, which is pretty cool, because that means we can just go in and uh, continue editing this uh, as we wish. We can, like, I don't know, bevel this edge or something just being crazy with it and it will just uh, keep that uh, the edit step. Pretty cool. Uh, undo all that because that was just to show you. And uh, now I am going to uh, press display modifier in edit mode here on the lattice deformer so we can see uh, actually what is happening. Uh, while we are deforming this object. And also I'm going to press this with adjust the cage uh, to modify the result. So now we can see exactly which edge we need to uh, crease here uh, in order to get this hard edge. So crease being the magic word here, I'm going to open up this panel again, pressing M and mean crease this edge loop and uh, well that didn't do much uh, actually because well you can see a little bit of a hard edge but uh, mainly we can't see anything because the subsurface modifier is on the top of this modifier stack and that means that we uh, if we just turn off this and turn this off uh, Oh yeah, uh, it will subdivide the object first. Basically, whatever modifier is on the top is applied first. Then it goes down a step, applies this one. If we had another modifier on the bottom of this one, it will apply this after uh, the lattice deformer and so on and so on. So basically, whatever modifier is top is applied first. So it will subdivide our mod uh, object a lot first, then it will uh, bend it uh, to fit this deformer. And uh, basically just uh, this hard edge is uh, kind of waste. Uh, I just do this and it will reappear much, much better, as you can see. We toggle this here. See, by deforming the object first and then applying the uh, subsurf modifier, the hard edge is much more pronounced. That is basically what I wanted to say with that. <laughs> Sorry for going off on a tangent. So, uh, anyway, that is that object done. And this object here is basically the same thing. 
if we just um, duplicate this object and oh, actually duplicate the object and the deformer and just move it up to over here over here um, we can just reset uh, this deformer a little bit and uh, going into box selecting this uh, bottom row here scaling it on the on everything but the z-axis we can scale it in and that will kind of get us this uh, slightly curved shape here so that's how you get that object easily and then now in the well I guess I could take this uh, tubular uh, shape as well real quick we're just gonna delete this and delete this modifier too get rid of this crease and uh, this tube is basically this object as well just uh, with less uh, with a less curved um, object so we can just select this uh, edge loop here and press ctrl x that will dissolve all the loop cuts and the vertices that were uh, contributing to this curved shape and we can do continue doing this uh, until we have the shape we are looking for let's select this and select this loop cut and uh, gonna scale it down to flatten it a bit I'm gonna continue by selecting this loop cut too and this loop cut and scale it in along the z axis and continuing uh, so on and so forth until we have this very basic uh, tubular shape over here So all right, that is basically the first part of this tutorial done. And now I'm gonna move on to the second part, which will cover this uh, more advanced object here. But I hope you uh, had a good time and learned a lot. Um, and I'll see you maybe in the next video. Okay, thank you and uh, goodbye.